Hey everyone, my name is Sienna Boyd. We are back in the Choose Health mm -hmm. studio with Dr. Stephen Chang. Hello. He is one of our <laughs> newest physicians at our Hemet location. He's an internist, I'm, so that's super exciting for us. We're yeah. so happy to have him. Happy to, to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Today we're going to be talking about arthritis. I know that's something that comes up a lot, especially as we mm -hmm. age. It is an mm -hmm. autoimmune disease, or at least that's what I'm familiar with. Um, so I want to learn more about it. I'm sure you guys will too. So yeah. can you tell us what arthritis is? And I know there's Certainly. different kinds too. So Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And you're right about arthritis uh, potentially being an autoimmune disease, but okay. not it doesn't necessarily have to be an autoimmune disease. Okay. Uh, but arthritis essentially, the def um, the, me the to define it is um, inflammation of one's joints. Okay. And, um, and when we have arthritis, um, you know, typically patients come in with... Uh, uh, pain in their joints and and our job as physicians is to determine you know what kind of arthritis this may be mm. could this be from osteoarthritis could it be from uh, rheumatoid arthritis could it be from psoriatic arthritis oh gosh um, there's various um, arthritis um, that are um, that can occur in one's body so you touched mm -hmm. on three different kinds so yeah. osteoarthritis what is that so osteoarthritis that's one of the more more common ones that okay. we, we we typically see um, day to day in the offices, and this tends to uh, happen more so in the elderly, uh, okay. because as one ages, as one as the body starts to age, the the what happens is that the the cushion that's situated between bones, uh, the cartilage, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it acts as like a sponge or some kind of cushion to so that bone doesn't uh, sit on each Rub other. Rub together, okay. Yeah, because when bone rubs on each other that's very painful and sure. that's, that's what causes osteoarthritis. But, okay. and so there's a separation between this and there's also fluid between that synovial fluid that keeps the joints well lubricated. Okay. And you can think of it like a, a part, like a car part where yeah. you have to um, lubricate certain parts of the car so that it can run smoothly and it doesn't creak and crack. Got it. Okay. Um, and so as, as one ages, as the body ages, the, this, uh, synovial space, or the joint space, uh, the cartilage and the fluid starts to uh, wear down and okay. it starts to decrease. Okay. And as a result of that, the bones start to get closer and closer to until the point where they actually do start perhaps touching. Okay. And that's when we start to develop um, uh, excruciating pains from that. And, and uh, more commonly that occurs in like the knees because, okay. you know, day in and day out for, for your for um, for most of our lives, we're always on our feet, hmm. and that starts to take a, a big toll as we start to age. Okay, and mm -hmm. what would be the treatment for osteoarthritis? As someone mm -hmm. comes in and you diagnose them that that mm -hmm. is what is ailing their joints, right. um, mm -hmm. what would be the course of action for that? Right. Typically, um, the course of action would be to, uh, you know, in the earliest stages, we want to try to provide symptomatic support okay. and symptomatic relief, and that's typically can be achieved by you know um, um, trying to uh, uh, soothe the area because it okay. is a um, uh, process of inflammation. Okay. And so we typically try to target it by applying uh, heat or okay. applying ice to it to try to soothe the area. Okay. We can also try uh, different modalities in terms of applying creams on it, topical oh, creams. Okay. Um, for instance, like over-the-counter products such as Biofreeze, Bengay, Icy Hot, those can be utilized. And um, and we can also prescribe uh, medications such as uh, uh, diclofenac, which okay. is or Voltaren gel, which is something that is uh, anti-inflammatory. Okay. It's a topical NSAID. Okay. Uh, and uh, and you might have realized that some NSAIDs that we you might encounter from day to day is like ibuprofen. ibuprofen. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> ibuprofen. I know that one well. Yeah. Aleve. <laughs> yes. Um, things like that. Naproxen. Those are uh, what's called NSAIDs, which okay. are which function to help uh, reduce the inflammation. Okay. And, um, but those are typically taken by mouth. Right. And they have a what we call a systemic effect. Sure. And uh, sometimes that's good if you have multiple kind of pains throughout the body. Sure. Uh, but sometimes if it's just localized to one joint, it's uh, ideal to just target it right there rather oh, than take cool. take take like I didn't know there were creams that I could put on my knee if I had arthritis and and localize it to that one area exactly that's well awesome. that's what we tried to do because we want to target the area and try to provide relief in that area okay but uh, because if one takes too many NSAIDs um, by mouth uh, it can also have effects elsewhere in the body that we 
maybe not want because okay. um, it can tend to decrease the uh, lining of one's stomach oh. and gut and that can predispose to development of ulcers and it can also affect one's kidneys and and we wouldn't want yeah we don't want those that. things no, not at all <laughs> oh man so if we can we try to target them the joints individually if, if it's okay. not all over at least if it's localized we want to try those things first okay and actually one other thing that is uh, important to consider is actually um, physical therapy hmm. to to find ways to uh, strengthen one's muscles can help in terms of uh, reducing the uh, bone on bone kind of uh, effect interesting and, yeah and so we typically want to refer folks to physical therapy to be evaluated and to determine if there's any strengthening exercises or right. stretching that can help um, um, relieve some of the pain. That's awesome. I yeah. can, you know, it's funny. I wouldn't have thought that that mm -hmm. physical therapy would be something to help with arthritis. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we just want to put, you know, a Band-Aid on it and exactly. just take medicine and not mm -hmm. treat or help alleviate those symptoms naturally by strengthening your muscles. I think that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Absolutely. Um, and I, sometimes it gets to the point where it gets so bad, though, that uh, all these modalities uh, aren't really helping any right. longer. And that's when uh, we start considering uh, more invasive approaches like surgery. Oh, okay. Where we have to do uh, replacements of the joints. Okay. Actually, is yeah. that where knee replacement surgeries come in? Exactly. Okay. That's when knee replacement surgery. Because once, once you get to the stage where the cartilage and the synovial fluid and then joint space narrows mm -hmm. and it's essentially bone on bone, there's at that point not much we can do in terms of alleviating the pain so much as to refer one to, to orthopedic surgeons to be evaluated okay. for um, a replacement of that joint. Are there certain people who ha have more of a predisposition to osteoarthritis, like mm -hmm. athletes or mm -hmm. people who use their knees, for example, a lot more? Yeah, or is it a natural thing? Some people have it, some people don't. So yeah, it's it's certainly a very natural process. Okay. Um, you know, as uh, one as one's body ages, the um, uh, the parts start to wear down. Okay. Essentially. <laughs> sure. and, and over time, it's it's bound to happen. Okay. Um, but there are certain cases where this can be accelerated, and as you mentioned, like in athletes, uh, especially ones who have uh, are involved in a high impact uh, kind of activity. Okay. Such as running. Um, or even jumping or playing basketball, they, they, there's, the knees take a tremendous impact. Okay. And uh, I know we've been focusing more on knees, but also other joints, sure. like the elbows and yeah. shoulders, they, they also take a role, especially with high, uh, high movements. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So it's, if you get older, there mm -hmm. is a possibility that yeah. you will get osteoarthritis, mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. you're an athlete or not. So exactly. very interesting. Mm -hmm. We had also touched on rheumatoid arthritis. Now, mm -hmm. is that the one that is an autoimmune? Yes. Okay. That's, that's an autoimmune process. And that's essentially where one's body starts to attack, uh, attack the joints okay. areas. And uh, they, there's different presentations of that, but it's typically, um, you know, sometimes you can see it in the hands, sometimes in the, sh in the shoulders. Sometimes the knees as well, ankles and all, and um, that uh, takes a little bit more uh, kind of a workup to determine as well. Interesting. Mm -hmm. How would you determine between different kinds of arthritis? So someone comes in with joint pain, mm -hmm. and so how would you determine if it was osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis? How would you uh, determine that? Uh, certainly. Well, first of all, we would you know uh, ask uh, a history. You know, right. a history is very important, and because in some cases. Uh, Arthritis are get worse during, throughout the day. Some they actually get better with movement. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So there's like little small nuances to yeah. kind of help us determine exactly what's going on, or there might be swelling that's involved, and then decrease in the swelling, and um, uh, throughout the day as well. Okay. And so um, typically, with the history, we are able to kind of uh, get a better understanding, and there's also imaging modalities as well. Sure and that we can utilize to help us uh, determine if what how the uh, joint space uh, is. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, how would you, it, so if you have rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. say you're diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, is there a different mm -hmm. treatment plan for that type of arthritis versus osteoarthritis? Absolutely, okay. yeah. In addition to like this uh, kind of supportive care to help relieve the pain, sure. you want to actually stop your body from attacking itself okay. in the joint spaces. So that's why there's types of different types of medicines uh, to uh, 
uh, combat that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there like anti-inflammatory food properties that you would want to eat? Is there a mm -hmm. specific diet that you would um, suggest someone be on if they do have Yes, actually, actually, okay. yeah, there, there is. As far as like uh, anti-inflammatory properties, there are several foods that are um, uh, could be beneficial for anti-inflammation. Okay. And uh, I know one of our doctors here, Dr. Majid, is a is a, is a strong proponent of like a, you know natural foods and okay. and kind of like trying to extract the most uh, benefits out of uh, the stuff that we eat. Yes, and some <laughs> of the things he mentioned to me is actually turmeric. Turmeric actually has a very uh, good uh, anti-inflammatory property. And uh, so has, so does ginger. And turmeric you know. and ginger look very similar. They do, and yeah. so where would you, if you were to eat turmeric, do you know what dish you would put that in? Or how, how would you mm. incorporate that I, into your diet? As far as turmeric, um, you know, I it seems to be like a, 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 a spice that's heavily used in uh, Indian uh, cuisines. Okay. And so that's as far as my experience goes. <laughs> Me too. I still have much to learn as far as how we can incorporate turmeric into, into our diet. We'll ask diet. some nutritionists. We'll ask some of them, yeah. <laughs> uh, but ginger is, is a great uh, okay. is a great one. Anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and there's other ones that Dr. Madrid actually mentioned that uh, are also beneficial. And, um, you know, at this point in time, I don't quite remember them. <laughs> That's but, okay. There's so many. There's so many. No, I know yeah. on um, on our website on Shoes Health, mm -hmm. you're able yeah. to actually look. We have mm -hmm. some nutrition courses that you can do, mm -hmm. um, and one of our nutritionists goes in depth on the nutrition of different foods. And so, um, exactly. I know anti-inflammatory foods is something I've heard a lot of over yes. the past couple mm -hmm. years. Yeah. Um, so as they do more research, I'm excited to yeah. dive deeper into and, that. And I'm excited to also learn more about them yeah. as well, so I can incorporate into my practice as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. Is there anything else that you wanted to add about arthritis or anything that you would tell your patients if they did come in with arthritis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with arthritis, it's certainly something that uh, is very common and we see okay. that um, commonly in the office. And I would encourage one, uh, if one's experiencing joint pain, to you know come into the office so they can evaluate you okay. and, um, and really determine what's, what's going on. And there's other arth uh, arthritic processes that mm -hmm. we didn't even touch upon, like gout is another yes. common thing. Citric so, acid in or is, uric uric, acid. Uric ah, acid. Okay. There you go. Uric acid. Uh huh. <laughs> got it. Citric yeah. acid, not vitamin no. D. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Uric acid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so many different properties. So many different of... properties, and that's why we're here for you, so that we can, um, you know, determine exactly what's the cause of, of the joint pains, and and determine the best uh, kind of next step forward to to help you out. Love it. Thanks, mm -hmm. Dr. Chang. Well, yeah. if you're interested in finding a new primary care physician in the Hemet area. Dr. Ching is mm -hmm. wonderful. He is accepting new mm -hmm. patients. So feel free to give us a call if you mm -hmm. wanted to meet him or had any questions. Mm -hmm. But other than that, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me this morning. I appreciate it.